Hello and welcome to Midweek Wardy's Waffle. We're having some dry weather at the moment and it's turned very cold compared to what it was at the weekend. We're only about 11 to 12 degrees at the moment compared to last Saturday when I think it was around 23, so huge, uh, huge difference. A little bit of rain we had this morning, Wednesday morning, but only about a millimetre and a half, but it has done some of the spring crops uh, good because I, I always say that some, you know, when you look at sugar beet, when it acts like a, um, it's got leaves sitting up, it acts like a little funnel. And even though you might have a very small amount of rainfall uh, what we have get runs down the round the down the leaves into the middle of the plant anyway this week's update i'm going to visit another school in lincoln uh, this last week this is one of the schools i deal with and i talk to um a, a group of five-year-olds also looking at black grass we've got one or two areas of black grass that's coming out that uh, we haven't had for a few years so we look at that in detail at what we're going to do with that also beans the field behind me this is the field where we've got our hericot beans or our baked bean trial that they'll eventually turn into so a bit of an update and look at that. Also look at drones. Uh, I had a drone come in today, oh, sorry, this last week with Agri, um, and it wasn't just your normal drone. So look at that as well, because that was quite a special uh, special machine. And also we're loading out oats uh, as well um, and, uh, and getting those gone off the farm. So a bit of a varied um, sort of mixture of what's going on in this midweek update. So hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. Please click like and subscribe. And just remember, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And uh, if you make it to the end, we'll see you then. So back at another school today, this is the Redwood um, Primary School in uh, Waddington on the edge of Lincoln. Yesterday you saw me, or the previous video you saw me, I was at was uh, Birchwood Junior School. This time I've come with a tractor here and I've got my tray of uh, crops. We've got um, five-year-olds are gonna come out and learn all about the food here and the different crops. We've got barley, oilseed rape, oats, wheat and beans. And then I have got uh, various things here. I've got breakfast cereals, I've got some jap, jap, jammy dodgers, if I can say it. All children like that. Oats as well. There, I've got some porridge oats, and also got a bottle of vegetable oil. But of course, where are we? That is made from oilseed rape. For breakfast this morning, hands up. Who had toast for breakfast? Who had toast? Who had cereal for breakfast? So keep your hands up, toast I and sit. Cereal. You had cereal? Oh, no, I no, you had toast. I, I didn't have anything. Oh, because dear. My mom, because my mum didn't have anything. Oh, dear. Well, if you, have, if you had cereal and if you had toast for breakfast, what do you think made cereal and toast? This crop here. And this is wheat. So when wheat is ground up, wheat makes flour and the flour turns into bread and wheat also goes into lots of breakfast cereals so here we have some breakfast cereals do you recognize these how many have you had those for breakfast now also some breakfast cereals are made from these any idea what these are no. oats. Oats. oats oats make also go into some breakfast cereals and also we have any idea what this is i don't know Barley. 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 So um, Special K has barley in it. So Special K your mum and dad might have. Not you, but all. But barley goes to make Special K. Any idea what barley also makes? This is something your... Cereal. Yes, but this, it's, a, it's a drink. Something your dad, your dad would like. Beer. Yes, beer. Well done. And one other drink made in Scotland. Whiskey. So have you heard of whiskey? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So barley will make whiskey as well as some cereals and beer. These oats, these are a special type of oat. These will actually go to make uh, pet food. How, who likes jammy dodgers? Oh, oh, I like it. It. <laughs> Me oh. as well. I like what, what do you think makes jammy dodgers? Oh, them. No. Oh, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, wheat. wheat, well done. Uh, ten out of ten. Wheat. So ten remember, wheat ten. makes lots and lots of things, and it's the flour when it's ground up that makes the biscuits. Wheat also. There is another thing. Who likes Kit Kat? Yeah. Oh, no. oh, my God. If you look on the back, there is also wheat flour in Kit Kat, and also. Munches? Who likes munches? Me! Yeah. Uh, so lots of sweets oh and biscuits 
actually are made with wheat. What other thing that you like? What does your mum make that comes? Oh, uh, my mum's in making tea. Mm. Oh yeah, oh, no, I make cake. My mum yes, makes, I make cake. cakes. Cakes are made from wheat flour. What's so, made out of that? We'll like talk about that in a minute. So cakes are made from wheat flour. So you can see wheat is really, really, really important. There's lots of things grown or made from wheat. Now, when we're looking at um, this one, we're talking about this one. What do you think this is? Nuts. No. Nuts. No. Nuts. no. Um, I know. Beans. What? what did you say? Beans. Yeah, beans. beans. Yes. Beans. Well done. Beans. beans. So these are beans. Now, how many of you or your parents or your mum and dad like chili? Uh, chili no, con carne? Yeah, like yeah. like you will have you will have I some have beans. You will have some beans in your chili. Oh. And in, in also some curries have beans in. How many farm animals can you name? Farm animals. Pigs, Pigs. that's one. Go in the look. Rabbit. Yes, but I'm thinking of farm animals, not pets. Yeah, cows, correct, that's two. Goats, three. Yes, sort of, I'm thinking more, yeah, we'll, we'll have that one. No, I'm thinking of farm animals, but they are sort of. We've got three more yet. Little ones, look, think of little ones. No, no, no. Yeah. Piglets. No, well, pig, pigs and piglets is the same. I'm going to ha help you here. I'm looking at ducks, chickens. I know. Chickens. Um, yeah, ducks. And, now, they have to be fed, and a lot of their food comes from these crops. So the black one, how many of you see when you're driving about, how many of you see uh, fields with yellow flowers in? Lots and lots of yellow flowers. Yeah. So that, that is oilseed rape. In a minute. Now when this is crushed, it turns into oil. The secret's in the name, oilseed rape. But this says vegetable oil on the front, but when you actually look, it says ingredients, 100% rapeseed oil. So even though it says vegetable oil, it is made with rapeseed oil. And rapeseed oil is better than olive oil and sunflower oil. It's healthier. And also, bread will also have rape oil in it when bread is made. Yeah. To keep it moist. Really important. Every loaf of bread has oil in it. Start again at the beginning. What's this one? Barley. Barley. Well done. Barley. This one? Oil. 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 Seed. Rape. Oil. That's right. This one? Wheat. No. Oh, wheat. Uh, who said it? Oh, no. Oats. Well done. Oh. This one? Wheat. Yes, you've got that. Well done. And this one? Wheat. Yes, you've got those two. Well done. Can That's. I have a touch? Yes, you can have a touch. Can I have a touch? Okay. Yes? Can I have a touch? Don't mix them, though. But you feel them. If you want, if you want to have a touch. That's it. So the, we have tyres on a tractor, obviously, to, to minimise the soil pressure and the damage to the soil. So it's very important we don't damage the soil. It's Tuesday morning, just looking at some of our uh, crops here, and I just noted this wheat down there. There's quite a lot of black grass in it. You can't quite see it from here. Uh, just on that field edge, which is going to take quite a lot of pulling. I might have to spray that off. And then just looking at this barley, you can just see how desperate we are for some rain. That dark green patch in the middle of the screen at the minute is where we had a heap of sewage sludge a few years ago. And the dark lines through the field are where land drains are. You can see they're regular as clockwork. Every chain apart, which uh, that's what they put in years ago, that the distance, a chain is 22 yards or about 20 metres, 21 metres. And it just shows they all go down to that bottom end of the field, the dark lines. Fascinating, that's how drains show up when you look down here as well. You just see how desperate we are for a good rain. So just looking a bit closer at this black grass, 
can see here it waving above the crop. There is quite a lot here. And the wheat's a bit thinner as well. I don't think that's helped. This is the area that was sprayed off at the side to stop anything there contaminating the cross and just have a nice line for wildlife to dry out if it rains and the combine header to go. Yeah, there's quite a lot of black grass here. Remember with this black grass, we need 100 ears of these a square metre to give one tonne a hectare yield reduction. Well, when you start to look at it, here in this alone, just that, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. There's about 22 ears just in that one little patch, no bigger than my hand. So you can see you don't have long to get to a tonne a hectare. I actually think this area here, to be honest, needs, needs round upping off. The yield loss from doing this, yes, we're going to have from up there to the end of the road, it's probably 200 metres long. Not quite to the tram line, which from the edge of the field here is 16 metres. But I will work it out and just see. Yeah, there's just too much here for my liking to hand pull. So what happens is you walk in here like this to hand pull it and you end up treading it in the ground and leaving it and then it seeds. And you've got to get 97, 98% of these pulled to just stand still and not in, increase the seed bank. I've just had a bit of a calculation of it. I've walked down this area down here and just measured it and it's about 130 metres long. So if we were to spray off an area 10 metres wide, that's uh, one point, sorry, 0.13 of a hectare. So about um, 0.3 of an acre. If you said it was going to do four tonnes an acre, just as a pluck of figure out the sky, that means that on this area, if I round up this area off and killed the black grass and the crop, we would lose around 1.3 um, tonnes of wheat. And if you times that by, uh, by 200, that's uh, 200 pounds a tonne, just say it got to that, that's I think 260 pounds we would lose. But the, uh, the benefit in actually stopping that black grass from seeding, the amount of extra herbicides we would have to try and use over the next few years to, uh, to deal with that would be uh, far more than that. So I do actually think I am going to round up that off. And, uh, and if I've got any more patches like that, which we might have in one or two fields, we'll have to do the same. But just worth noting, we've been on this sort of crusade of zero tolerance to black grass now for eight years. And um, first year we sprayed off 160 acres of growing wheat. Nala, Nala, come here. Um, sorry, she's near the road. Um, we sprayed off 160 acres of um, growing wheat. And then gradually over the, last, over the next four years after that, we dropped it down to zero. But I, I really do really believe that um, not allowing it to seed has been a major contributing factor to us getting to the levels we've now got. Uh, which this year it's probably more than we've had for um, the last three or four years but it is a bad year this year. We're just clearing the bales up here from the Young Farmers Rally a week ago. The reason we're only just doing it is because obviously there was 12,000 litres of water in this um, when they had this made this tank out of plastic for the pillar fight if you remember the, when they let it go it was really wet here as you can see here so I didn't want to be cutting this grass up loading the bales when it's wet so we've left it a whole week and it's dried a treat round here now so we're just loading them up onto this onto this trailer this is the muck grab that we picked up really cheap I think we paid about £1,200 for that about, about eight to ten years ago we don't use it much but it was a worthwhile addition to the attachments we have for the for the money too i've just come to the field where we've got the trial of hericot beans which are the variety or the type that turn into baked beans this is the first plot that was planted about three weeks ago, the first area. You can see here the beans quite well established on rows, probably 20 centimetres wide, something like that. 
but you can just see the type of shape of leaf, what they're like. And then this is what we planted only about just over a week ago on the outsides of the field. You saw in one of my updates, not quite as forward, but they are coming through okay. Not quite sure whether that's just picking up some of the pre-emergence herbicide there, some of the yellowing of it. Just looking along the edge of the field here, these are coming better. But yeah, all this is that we haven't had a rain. I think it wouldn't actually have hurt if they hadn't, if they'd been drilled just a touch deeper. Because I think you've got some gaps here. Right, you've got seeds, plants there, and I should say there's some seeds here. There we go, there's one there. That's the size of them. Thanks, Nala. Got somebody from Agri has just come today with a drone to fly over these plots and also our wheat variety plots that's showing some huge differences as you saw one of my updates a couple of weeks ago. This is not your normal drone by the look of it. Yeah, so this is the drone we've got. So just looking at the hand, you can just see how big this is. So what did you say this make? It's DJI, obviously. It's DJI, yeah. it's a Matrice 210 V2. And basically we use it for the uh, multispectral imaging. Yeah. See the Micasense multispectral on the front here? Oh, there, yeah. You can see the different sensors on the underneath, but it captures. Right. So they'll be looking at different wavelengths. Yeah. Reflectance. Yeah. And we'll then be able to calculate that with the data it collects yeah. from doing the photogrammetry that we've just done over the plots. Yeah, yeah. So price of one of those? Uh, I think that's altogether including the sensors. Yeah. It's about 13, 14,000 pounds. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah. So we use this within the R&D department to go over the top of trial plots. Yes. Uh, so we can collect really high, high image data. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. This is the controller and you can just see it's a bit more high tech than your normal standard uh, drone control the way you put a phone or an iPad on it. It is, yes. Uh, yeah. So that there is the beans that, I, that, that you've got the trial plots going on. So I've mapped that <laughs> yeah. and I've set this up to fly at a certain angle across the beans and we'll be able to replicate that every time we come back now. So but in exactly the same places? Exactly the same flight plan. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that there, it was flying to an accuracy of about two centimetres. Perfect. Was it so, really? Yeah, crikey. And it, it tells you the, the distance, the time it was going to estimate it'll take you to fly that flight, yep. and the waypoints and photos from that area that it's, yep. that it's flying. So you were saying that you've actually walked that field yourself? Yes, so I, I've been out and plotted the, the four corners of this field, yep. and then I can set the parameters of the, of the flight. So yes. if I, I'm flying at 30 metres at the moment, but I can set that at 100 metres. Yeah, let's just turn it. That's it there, yeah. And then that changes the estimated flight time and the flight pattern, so you can see the flight Oh, the flight, and that's where it's flown. And it's flown yeah. itself autonomously. You haven't flown it. Once you map it and map the yeah. corners, it then takes over. Yeah, so I'm here to make sure everything's okay. Yeah. And if anything goes wrong, I'm here to do something about that. But basically, it'll fly itself. Yeah, yeah. so it'll take off itself, yeah. fly the flight, come yeah. back, fly back down to where it took yeah. off. Brilliant. Just looking at this and you're saying the flight time's what 25 minutes about 25 minutes yeah so two batteries per flight and that they're, they're just a sort of when you size of them yeah they're, they're yeah. fairly heavy yeah i don't know yeah. what they are maybe nearly a kilogram if you think of a yeah. bag of sugar something like that yeah and there's two yeah. of them so yeah we have three sets of batteries yeah roughly 25 minutes of time yeah uh i did a flight earlier over on your winter wheat and we did about six hectares right okay so. got a real smart lorry come for a load of oats but it's not our money too that's loading them because it's on one of our contract farms and it's William with his Mac Bro Teleshift loading and uh, even though we do 99% of the work on the farm William still kept his forklift and does load a lot of his own grain and these are naked oats that's going out keeping this side of the wind because of the dust because they are exceedingly itchy these type of oats
we've got a drying floor here, just like like ours. These sheds are a lot smaller sheds, but really useful because they hold about 300 tons of wheat in each shed. So really handy for storing varieties and small parcels separately. So William's got seven of these sheds all the way along this yard. And this is the best shed. This is the newer one. See with the Ford 6610 there. And our Bailey trailers aren't bad at tipping up in this shed, but it's these other ones. We just have to be careful. Just managing to keep out the dust with the wind that's the right direction. So we've got the rape shed empty now, so all the oilseed rape that was stored for ADM uh, is empty. We've got some oats going though, but um, one of the loads of oats that uh, has just been going, it's been loaded up from the wrong farm and so we're now going to have to tip it because this load is going to switzerland and the oats that we've grown on ours last year wasn't quite good enough so it's we're having to load up from one of the contract farms and uh, but we didn't know before we started to load that this was uh, going to switzerland so we've tipped him in the middle because we haven't cleaned up properly from the rate yet we've just got to hoover this up sorry i'm done that so we've tipped him here but beauty of having a tall shed we can get an arctic right up in here which is good so we're going to load up across the road now at williams farm the farm you just saw loading up in this video with his map bro telehandle a few minutes ago so i hope you've enjoyed that midweek update you can see crop of spring barley here behind me uh, this one's looking a little bit better than what uh, the other one did in the video um, a few minutes ago, but we'd, we are uh, getting in need for a good uh, five or eight millimetres or ten millimetres of rain. But I don't think we're going to get any of that just for next week. But yeah, spring crops are looking OK, but uh, yield is going to suffer. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on Sunday.